Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17 was the first time that the author referred to Jesus as a priest. It says, therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. I think for most of us, it's easy to see Jesus as the sacrifice for our sin, but it's necessary it's necessary. I'm gonna, it's necessary for us to also see him as the priest that offered himself as our sacrifice. He's not just the lamb, he's the priest offering the lamb. In this verse, it identifies Jesus as our high priest, but it also defines the work of the priesthood. He serves God by making propitiation for the sins of the people. So very simply, the priest stands between the wrath of God and the sin of man, right? Man is sinful. God is just. That means there is a wrath involved. The priest stands in between. So let's start with this. Not our sin and not God's wrath, but rather God's character. The moment God gave Israel the law, what did he also give them? A priesthood. The moment he gave them a law to obey, he gave them priests. He gave them a mediator to stand in between his wrath and their sin because of his great love. He gave them a law to obey, knowing they would fall short, and so he gave them priests. Men didn't come up with the idea of priests, right? Men didn't say, you know what, we're going to blow this, we need somebody to help out. It was God saying, I'm going to give you a law, and I'm going to give you priests, because while my wrath has to be justified, my, my love will overcome my justice. It was God who gave us a priesthood at the same time that he gave Israel a law. God's love is so great that he gave his people a law to follow and a mediator for when they fell short of that law. This is simply more evidence of God's character. From the moment man sinned, God provided mediation between their sin and his wrath, and he did it himself. Right? In the garden, when Adam and Eve sinned, rather than destroying them, God clothed them in animal skins. Which means that God took the lives of what I presume to be two animals, not only to cover their nakedness and shame, but to cover their sin and to satisfy their wrath. So let's stop here for a minute. Because we become a people that are so concerned with ourselves that we only notice the covering of the shame and we only notice the covering of the emotional damage that ca they caused themselves. And we don't realize that the real thing God covered was their sin and His wrath. Because if he doesn't cover our sin, it doesn't make any sense to cover our shame. Sin is a reason for shame until it's covered. And so what does God do? He himself becomes the mediator. Where there is sin, there must be a high priest or there will be judgment. We need a high 